Welcome everyone. This is the Beyond the Smile podcast. It's the huddle that we bring together our diversity and dentistry mentorship, our mentees from our nonprofit, the mentorship program that is really working to strengthen the diversity pathway from middle school to dental school. I am the founder uh, of the nonprofit, Dr. Layla Haisha, and I'm so excited to introduce to you my colleague, Dr. Shana Warner, who hails from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So welcome, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, you know, I saw what you were doing by having uh, mentees coming into your office and your practice and, and knowing the value of really closing that gap. We, we all know the percentage of Blacks in, in, our, in our profession. You know, 3.8 is barely going up, still below 4%. And we really want to close that gap so we have, can reach parity in our dental workforce because we know how it is affecting just the access to care and overall optimal oral health outcomes. So I appreciate you doing the work and, and joining the fight. You're one of those mentors for the movement. <laughs> <laughs> but just if you don't mind, just share a little bit more background. I know I can tell everybody that you are HBCU grad through and through, right? Yes, Undergraduate yes. Southern and a Meharry Medical College School of Dental mm -hmm. graduate. So I'll let you share more about that in your yes. past. So yes, I am a very proud grad of Southern and Meharry and also supporter financially, um, physically, whatever I can do for my universities, um, I am a contributor. But um, I am a general dentist in Baton Rouge. I work at an FQHC. Um, been there now for quite a few years. Um, they're trying to keep me for <laughs> quite a few more um, and we'll see how that works out. But um, I've been a dentist now. I graduated from Meharry in 2009. So I've worked in a lot of different populations. Um, but for the most part, uh, most of my patients in the makeup, they've always looked like me. Um, I have a servant heart. So I enjoy the, you know, the financial part of dentistry, but more so than anything, I've enjoyed um, being able to be um, someone who educates my community, being able to help them. Um, any way that I can. So it has led me to being uh, where I am now and pretty much everywhere that I've worked so far in life. So um, truly feel like I was placed at each of those places. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. And and I didn't share earlier, my uh, my nephew, my nieces, my brother-in-law are all in Baton Rouge right oh, now. Yeah, really? Yeah, okay. well, I'm from, um, I'm from Kansas City. Um, but yes, my brother and sister-in-law are in Baton Rouge and she went to Southern. So she's like, oh. I know, right? Yeah, okay, we got yeah. to connect. <laughs> <laughs> so tell, um, and not everyone, especially some of our pre-dental students um, and those still exploring dentistry know about FQHC. Can you share a little bit more about what that is and how it serves the population? So an FQHC um, actually um, is an acronym, stands for Federally Qualified Health Center. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, we get grants from the federal government to offset costs uh, for the uninsured, underinsured. Um, basically, um, we are able to provide a slide and scale fee. So most uh, procedures at, are at significantly reduced costs based on those grants that we receive from the government. Um, and my particular um, FQHC is pretty much a one-stop shop. We offer it all medical dental, behavioral health, podiatry, oh. um, peds. We have it all pretty much. Um, and if we don't have it, our CEO is focused on getting it. Um, and so we do try to um, do um, work in tandem to make sure that we're treating the whole patient. Um, we work with our medical providers, you know, to make sure that, um, you know, if I see someone who has high blood pressure or mm -hmm. um, just notice different things inside the mouth that, um, don't look right, you know, referring them to them and, you know, they're doing the same on their end um, because most of them have not had insurance or, you know, don't have the financial means for it. They're not going to um, primary care, you know, mm -hmm. on that regular schedule like they should. So um, we do try to provide the best care um, at a reasonable cost. Um, and like I said, we, we pretty much work um, in tandem, trying to make sure we're treating the whole patient. So it's been rewarding. Um, you know, I had a patient um, 
within the past few weeks, um, really high elevated um, blood pressure. And she was very upset with me because I wouldn't do the extractions that day, but, um, you know, educated her on, you know, why we couldn't do it, but also the risk of, you know, what could happen if, you know, the elevated blood pressure remained, um, brought in one of the providers, you know, they counsel with and try to get her to come follow up with them for more treatment and to get on medications. And she did not. She had a stroke the next week. Oh, my um, goodness. Actually. And so that was very disappointing. She's doing well now. But in that sense, you know, she did not listen. But her husband called to thank me for, you know, at least trying to educate and get her the help that she needed. Um, and I've since talked to her. She sent me a nice little um, Bible. Um, oh. You know, just to thank me, but um, you were like her angel. I mean, you did the extraction, you know, but I felt so bad. You know, um, <laughs> like I said, she was very upset at the moment because, of course, she came in in pain and she wanted what she wanted at that moment. And I tried to, you know, educate her on that and get someone else in to um, provide some treatment. And um, you know, I felt bad that that happened like that. Um, mm -hmm. But thankful that she is okay, and you know she's now on track to you know getting the meds that she needs and um, changing her lifestyle, diet, and um, with exercise. So um, that's one of the stories where you know it goes kind of well, but you know then there are some that don't go as well. Right. Um, but being able to be in that environment where we can work together and you know try to counsel them and give them um, the best health care. Well, I mean, I think that's uh, such a great story to share and also to kind of demonstrate uh, how dentists, how we are, we are there as dentists to take care of their teeth, but we are treating the, the whole patient, no, mm -hmm. not just teeth. You know, there's a human and a body behind those teeth yes. that we have to be aware of. And also just to see the impact that you have. And then, you know, had you not done that, you probably never would have followed up and, and then see what happens. And so whenever I, we find these kids who are interested in STEM and they're talking about medicine, it's just so important for us to say, but you know, look at, at what difference you can make in someone's life in dentistry. So right. thank Absolutely. you for sharing that. Yeah. I always tell them that the head is not detached from the body. So you need to know <laughs> the whole <laughs> everything about the body and be prepared for any emergency, um, yeah. know everything about it, educate your patients. Yeah. And the other lesson in that too, because I always say this, the minute that I like let my patient, well, I'm in pediatric dentistry. So if I let a parent dictate my treatment, it always spirals down. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> we are the experts. <laughs> <laughs> right. And yeah, but I know we all have a giving heart. We want everyone to be happy. We want to accommodate them and do all that. But it could be at the detriment of their health, um, their well being. So let that be a lesson, <laughs> to all students, yes. that that will you'll be faced with that, and you have to stand firm and grounded on what you know is right. So, did you know um, while you were in dental school that this was the path you wanted to take, um, going into public health? Well, I'm uh, yeah. I mean, kind of. Um, well, I would say not going into it. No, absolutely mm -hmm. not. When I thought about being a dentist, I wanted to go on and become an orthodontist. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, once I got in and started learning about the different things, I was like, I don't think ortho is for me. Um, <laughs> and so rotating through different clinics um, in Nashville, we had Matthew Walker, which is an, also an FQHC. Um, and we were able to go through there and rotate. Um, something about it just kind of stood out to me. And um, you got to kind of see it all. You know, we do a lot of walk-ins, emergencies. Um, so, you know, you never know what you're going to get day to day, you know. <laughs> and I think that um, you on your toes. <laughs> keeps me from being bored. Um, sometimes a little too much excitement. But, um, you know, it, it allows me to experience um a full realm of dentistry. Yeah. And, and you do, you see a lot of kids as well in that? Um, I don't see as much as I used to, but we, we do see kids, but most of my patients now are, um, you know, advanced age. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. Right. Um, well, I know a lot last week, a lot of the mentees were saying, we really just want to know some tips about how to succeed in not only getting in dentistry, but we kind of 
title this Beyond the Smiles because we want our mentees to be successful beyond dentistry as well, beyond dental school mm -hmm. as well. But um, what are some tips that help you to get where you are? You know, a lot of times people want to give them the shortcuts, <laughs> yes. keep them from some of the, the mm -hmm. wrong turns we made. But I mean, everything ends up the way it's supposed to. But what's some advice you could offer? Some pearls. So some far. pearls <laughs> that I would give would be, you know, even once you are, you've completed dental school, um, hold on to those mentors. You know, you you got to have people that you can bounce ideas off of um, who are going to tell you their experiences um, of where they might have failed or, you know, succeeded. And each person's story is going to be different. But um, I know for myself, I was experiencing burnout and got a chance to talk to my mentor. And I'm thinking, I'm just like, oh my God, this is what I've wanted to do since the age of 13. And now I don't want to do it anymore. I'm so burnt out and all. And I'm thinking I'm the only one that's experiencing this, right? You know, and I get a chance to talk to her one day and she's like, oh yeah, no, that's <laughs> normal. You know, like take some time off, you know, um, you know, just kind of do a reset. You know, you got to take time for yourself. You got to balance. So um the value in having a mentor throughout. Um, you know, I feel like I'm a seasoned dentist now, but I still have those mentors that I reach out to and they're like, hey, let's do a check-in or, um, I so that, that is one of the things that I would for sure um, hold on to. But also um, in when you're looking for um, where you want to practice and establish yourself. You know, um, for me, I love a true work-life balance and my FQHC gives me that because um, unlike some places, like I work in private practice um, briefly and mm -hmm. for that, you know, I was 1099. So I got paid. Some days got paid a lot of money. Some days it was like, man, you know, but um, I like to take off because I like to travel oh, um, and do, have a work-life balance, right? And so when I took off, I needed to plan for those things. Um, so my FQ, FQHC has allowed me to, you know, have PTO, have health care, so I don't have to worry about those kinds of things. So that's peace of mind for me. So I think that when I was in my private practice, it was a little more stressful because I knew I had to do this. And I, you know, if I didn't do this, how are you going to, you know, survive yeah. this lifestyle? And, you know, um, so it was like more work, work, work um, and no fun, no excitement in it, you know? So um, figuring out, you know, what kind of, what, what that looks like for you, if you're okay with going and, you know, hustling and doing all the work and then, you know, or working hard and don't have to take any time off. Yeah. Private practice may be great for you. You know what I mean? Like, or if you have at least supplemental somewhere where you can at least just ease into it, it may be the best thing for you. So figuring out like what that looks like in your life. And it's okay if you don't like where you are, you don't, you're not oh, married yeah. to it. You don't have to no, say. No, that's you know? the thing. That's so true. Yes. <laughs> you know, so try out different things. You know, there are plenty of, I, um, dental jobs now are like spam. You know, I get calls and texts and emails all day, every day right. about jobs everywhere, you know? And so um, if you don't like something, change it. But wherever you are, make sure you stay true to what you know, mm -hmm. document, um, and don't let anyone compromise your license or you providing quality health care. Oh, great. Great advice. Yeah. Um, and also and with, with your FQHC, do they have some uh, tuition or reimbursement? So, yes. Yeah, so um, loan repayment um, loan is an option. Payment. And in the state of Louisiana, because they do need health care providers of all sorts, mm -hmm. um, there are plenty of loan options. But yes, um, at my FQHC, um, there is a loan repayment um, yeah. option as well. And that's one of the things, even when you are um, for current dental students or recent graduates, um, if you're going into places like that, you know, trying to, you know, when you're looking over your contract, even asking them to contribute something towards um, loan repayment. And then that way you can still maybe qualify for National Health Service Corps repayment, mm -hmm. or if your state offers any loan repayment, those kinds of things. So, you know, it's good to be able to no negotiate those kinds of things in your contract as well. Well, thanks for sharing that, because I don't think a lot of people realize how much power we have in negotiating. Um, mm -hmm. they, they will give you like a contract, but there's always some room to negotiate mm -hmm. and what to ask for. Yes. So I think that would, that's so helpful because 
you know, a lot of the mentees and the, the cost of dental schools, they're coming out with almost a half million dollars in debt. Yes. And we know that tends to be, you know, one of the barriers for uh, students from underrepresented backgrounds um, of, of going into dentistry. Yeah. And we know that that's reflected in the lack of representation in our field. So just want to reiterate to everyone, don't let the sticker shop stop you. <laughs> you <laughs> still go get your degree and then we'll figure it out. There, there's, yes. there's opportunities and programs like yours that you're- And if you, if you can become a National Health Service Corps scholar while you're in school, um, that's one of those things that I regretted. You know, like um, a few of my friends did it and I was like, <laughs> what happened? Why? <laughs> what was I doing? I was a slacker, you know, and so I had to do it on the back end, whereas they were um, they were not worried about any tuition while they were there. They were getting, you know, a stipend every month mm -hmm. um, and all they had to do was work a certain amount of time in an underserved area um, to help pay that back. Um, and how rewarding. Yeah, to be able yeah. To so, I that. mean, you know, take yeah. advantage of their scholarships out there. So, I mean, if you can get them, you know, <laughs> Search high and low. We, everybody has a smartphone now. So use that phone <laughs> to look. And, you know, especially if you're first generation, you know, because we, like you said, the 3.8%, that's very real. In yeah. 2022, that is the actual statistic for the number of African American dentists. So um, we're needed, you know, so look for those scholarships. Um, every opportunity. No, we're having a flag grow. I mean, that's why this all started because in 20 years after I came out of dental school, it's the same, but when I started doing research on this, really has been about four decades that we have been just at that, that same mm -hmm. percentage. So something needs to change. And that's why yes. we are really trying to reach to our, our youth sooner, um, especially Black, Latinx, and um, Native American students in a Adia exit interview for dental students, we found that they made the decision about dentistry before college. So mm -hmm. in this um, uh, this population, and so this is this is why it's important. And, and you were mentioning at age 13, 13, 14, that you already knew about dentistry. Yes. Who influenced you? Um, so my cousin is a dentist and oh, okay. <laughs> um, I can remember talking to him, I think, it took one time for me to talk to him. I knew I wanted to be some kind of doctor. Like I've always known that. Yeah. But by age 13, it was solidified that I wanted to be a dentist. And, um, you know, he had graduated. He was doing very well. And he was just talking about the work-life balance and just being able to help people. You know, I, I paid attention to teeth, not to the extent I do now, of course. <laughs> um, and I've always loved to smile. So I was like, oh, I can do that, you know. <laughs> I had no clue what that really involved until I'm like an undergrad. And it's like, if I don't get into dental school, what will I do? Because I had no backup plan, you know? So, yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm, it obviously worked out well. Yeah. <laughs> lucky Some days I'm like, man, um, what, what else can I do? <laughs> well, yeah. And, you know, mentees will ask, um, you know, about majors and, you know, is it, is it important that you have a biology major to get in dental school? Can you share what you did and what your advice is on that? So I was a biology major. Um, be, to me, it made the most sense because um, with all the prerequisites that you needed, um, biology or chemistry um, fit that for me. So I didn't have to take any extra classes. I basically was able to get all the classes I needed to apply for dental school um, mm -hmm. with, with that degree. Um, I have classmates, one was a music major mm -hmm. and he went back and decided he wanted to be a dentist. You know, we had several, um, who had worked as engineers or teachers and decided to go back and take the prerequisites. Um, and I don't think it made them any less competitive in dental school or, um, if you have the work ethic, you know, you know how to study, you, you know, um, balance, you know, good study habits, basically, you, you, you can succeed. Um, and I think with all of those people, they were determined. So um, we probably all were in there like, oh, my God, like, I got to get this. <laughs> right, yeah. You know, so, um, yes, I mean, you know, biology or chemistry, it makes for um, a smoother transition. You don't have to take as many extra classes. Mm -hmm. However, it's not, you know, 
You got to major in this. You got to do this. Those references, as long as you're getting that. Yes. And then, of course, getting the shadowing hours. And so you've had some mentees shadow you. Um, what advice a lot of times they, especially if they don't have a network or anyone in the family is almost like you're cold calling to ask a dentist to come shadow. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you advise a mentee to approach a dentist to ask if they can get some shadow hours with them? Yeah, be bold. You know, um, if you don't know anyone, I'd say I had a young lady who found me on Instagram and uh, <laughs> she sent me a message and I was like, come on, you know, like I'm, I'm always here to help, you know, someone helped me. So I know that I got to help the next. And, and that's always one of my messages to um, a lot of my mentees, you know, just make sure you help someone else, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, be bold about it. Um, if you know someone who knows someone, I've had several people to reach out to me about a niece, nephew, um, all kinds of random people reach out to me. Yeah. Um, and I'm never going to turn them down, right? Again, you know, I'm here to help. Um, I have the, you know, the facilities for them to come in and see. And um, even if it's not their particular um, area of interest, I usually call around and find someone else um, for them to go and shadow with. So, um, you know, by all means, most of these young people are on social media. Reach out, DM, leave a comment under a post and say, hey, I sent you a DM about coming to shadow. Whatever you feel like you need to do, um, call offices. If you don't have a direct contact with someone, call an office and say, um, you know, hi, um, and introduce yourself and just let them know or stop by one day. Um, I've noticed that a lot of the students at Southern will uh, reach out to professors and they generally reach out to me. I know a few professors in the um, biology and chemistry department. So they're usually, um, you know, emailing or texting yeah. to ask about different students. So um, if you don't feel bold enough to call or send a DM, go to your professors and ask, you know, if they know anyone or, if the, you know, there's a network of people that, you know, maybe can help. Mm -hmm. uh, that's great advice. Yeah, just to get that. But you're right. I mean, all of us <clears throat> want have, you know, just like you just servant, servant leader and giver, we, we're not going to turn you down. And if they're if they really just don't have the capacity, maybe it's not set up, they're an associate, and they can't bring in a mentee we can take advantage of the network that these dentists mm -hmm. have to find someone else to plug you in. Right. So um, tell us about your experience at Meharry. You know, they 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 pump out some great dentists. <laughs> you know, a lot of times when students and mentees are are trying to select the dental school, they're trying to weigh like, well, should I stay in my hometown and go here? Or I really want to go to Meharry, but as far, you know, then there's there's just so many factors. Um, yes weighing on um, people that share yes, your there, I think there are a lot of factors. For me, Meharry was my number one choice. So that cousin that I mentioned, he had graduated from Meharry. Um, and I remember reading a book probably at nine or 10 years old. I was reading some books that I shouldn't have been reading back then. But <laughs> in that particular book, they were talking about Meharry. And so um, when he graduated, it was like, oh, I'm going to Nashville. I'm going to Meharry, you know. Um, I interviewed at a few schools. Um, one of them that I interviewed at, I had some friends that had gone there for undergrad. As soon as I left the interview, we went out. We turn up as all <laughs> get out. And I said, I'm not coming here because <laughs> I'm, <getting> work done. <laughs> I'm not mentally prepared to be able to separate myself from this life and you know my previous life so mm -hmm. it's best that I don't go there but it was like as soon as I got to Meharry um my interview day it felt like home you know it felt comfortable um the people who interviewed me some of them gave me some really tough questions and I'm like listen I belong here I don't care what you ask me <laughs> I'm coming here, you know, like uh, I left there knowing that that's where I was going, you okay. know, um, mm -hmm. and my route was a little different. I was smart, mm -hmm. um, but I did not prepare for the DAT. Mm -hmm. I actually took it like around Mardi Gras because I'm like, <laughs> I'm smart. I'm a good test taker. I went in like on one of the days off and yeah. 
in between going to New Orleans to party and coming back, this was my mindset at the time, right? You know, yeah. and um, I didn't do very well on the DAT. And I'm like, I'm going to still apply. And I did. And, um, you know, my grades were really good, especially science scores, but I was very involved um, on campus and in the community. Mm-hmm. Um, they offered me a postback um, spot. And at that time, they used to offer about 10 students that for the dental school and maybe the medical school, like 20 to 25. And if you successfully completed that year, you were automatically guaranteed a spot, you know, in the first year class. And so, I mean, you know, I went in and, um, you know, did very well, so much so that they ended up giving me a scholarship for first year. So I was like, okay. I can get used to this, but um, I think that, and I remember talking to one of my friends and I was like, I don't know if I'm going to take it post back. Like I was expecting, you know, to be in the first year class. Yeah. This is how like unrealistic I was about that. Um, because there was another school still like, you can come to us. Like, and again, I knew mentally that wasn't where I was supposed to be. I chose to take that post back spot. And I'm thankful for that because I made some, you know, very lasting connections, really good friends from that program. Um, we've all gone on to become dentists and physicians, but it helped me in that year where I was still like taking the DAT during Mardi Gras and, you know, going on an interview and turning up to, you know, help me gain that focus that I really needed to successfully get through dental school. The, the, the timing, was, that, the timing was right that way. The timing yeah. was absolutely right. Yeah. No, and, um, oh, <laughs> I was going to say also by doing that post baccalaureate, it probably really helped you to do well and succeed in the didactic part of dental school. Yes. Because you were taking the, what, probably micro and biology. Mm-hmm. And biology. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I mean, thank you for sharing that because there's so many students in that same situation. And it, you know, it's a good thing. You have to change the mindset of no, it's not that you didn't get in. You're getting another opportunity to be the best you can be and succeed because what we don't want is okay. We're we're in, you know, making a more diverse, equitable pool of candidates for dental school to get in. They get in, but then they don't matriculate out. Right. That's not success for us. So or. <laughs> so that's great. So uh, I was going to ask you was ed, ed, any advice you would give to your younger self or a, <laughs> <laughs> who, uh, in the same situation I, was, I could tell is like don't give up. Yes. <laughs> Positive. Don't yes. give up. If you're questioning yourself, you can do it. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, stay the course. Oh, so true. So true. And and don't go to Mardi Gras before you take. Don't. <laughs> Looking back, what uh, I know, people ask me how I started. I was like, well, it was 20 years ago. I'm sure they're, they're all everything's different now. Um, do you, did you do a course or or would you have done a course now or a booklet? Or- oh, yes, absolutely. Um, looking back on it, I absolutely would have done a course. Um, and during that post-baccalaureate program, um, we did get a course. Um, and so I got a true competitive score that I was like, oh, I'll get that. I'm smart. I'm a good test taker. I got that once I took the course, you know, had I done that, you know, prior to, um, it would have been much different, but that was my route. That was the route I was supposed to take. So, um, I'm thankful for that route in the sense of delaying me to, you know, be able to fully focus and, um, balance and learn how to study better. Absolutely. And see, this is why I wanted to bring dentists in. And I mean, these stories of resilience and perseverance just shows that um, we, we did, of course, you can too, um, but that it, it is possible. And it's just, the rewards are so much greater once you get on to the other yes. side. <laughs> like the story. I have a few students now who are... Um, who've gone on to do different master's programs and now are applying to um, dental school. And some of them, I didn't have to tell them. They would call me a mentor. Uh-huh. I didn't even think I had to tell them that. They sought those programs out, you know, to become better students. Um, one is graduating, I think this week. Uh, one graduated back in May, but they're all getting ready to apply for dental school um, or have submitted, I think I've submitted recommendations for 
three people this year. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Decision day is coming up yes. this week, like mm -hmm. the 15th or somewhere around there. Um, but what mentees don't, well, before someone gets a mentor, let's say a pre-dental student, they don't have a mentor. You're missing out on so much when you're saying that you're writing recommendation letters. Those are those weigh heavily, I know, <laughs> for a fact that it does. And, and you don't want to just have a kind of a casual relationship with someone and ask them for uh, a recommendation because it's not going to be strong or moving or persuasive at all. And in these relationships as a mentor and a mentee, it's not just kind of transactional, like, how am I going to get in? It's really mm -hmm. knowing the student, meeting them where they are, and just really helping them so that they they can develop not only their study skills, but their personal development too. So right. they can be strong. <laughs> yes. and, and my letters are per very personalized. So. Uh, yeah. yeah, they'll stand out. They'll yes. Stand out. <laughs> I and they all do. I mean, I don't really have to do much because they, you know, like I said, they are very um, eager. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. Oh, great. So prepare, get a mentor, mm -hmm. <laughs> study yes. hard. Yes. Um, you mentioned you love traveling. Is there anything else that brings you joy beyond dentistry that keeps that balance? That <laughs> harmony? I always say there's no true work-life balance, but more of a harmony. <laughs> I am, I'm a football lover um, of Southern University football. I yeah. prefer them winning yeah. um, as well as the New Orleans Saints. I also prefer them winning. Them winning. Um, <laughs> I'm a season ticket holder for both. Um, oh, I usually travel with Southern to every game, but with the Saints, oh. I usually pick one game a year. Um, so this year I went to the London oh, game. Yes. Yes. Oh, you support them in your time and talent and treasure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so football season is hectic. <laughs> yeah. I basically plan work around football in the fall. Um, that is great. Well, you're painting a wonderful picture of a life of a dentist. <laughs> and so we're trying to get out there to these students. <laughs> To consider dentistry. Um, you're already, I can tell by the lives that you're touching, you're leaving a legacy by everyone who comes in contact with you, Dr. Warner. Um, what is your hope to leave um, behind in um, your journey here? As a my hope is to leave behind um, a mark instead of a stain. You Ooh. know, I want to know right. that I made a difference in someone else's life um, mm -hmm. and made someone smile. You know, um, I mean, and that I've lived out my purpose. Right, right, right. Oh, oh, I can't say anything after that. That was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope we, I think we all aspire to do that, but um, it's great that you are. I can tell you right now, just you being here and sharing your story and your time with everyone who's going to see this in the future. I just want to make sure there were no questions in the um, chat there yet. We have a few watching. <laughs> I think we all aspire. Oh, wait, wait. That, Look, but, see um, that whole feedback comes on. <laughs> there was a question, so let me <laughs> pull that off. And before we sign off, uh, thank you. I'm so glad that you guys were able to, to join us. Uh, so there's a special note that I do want to read <laughs> from Jade Ritter. Thank you so much, Dr. Warner. I enjoyed listening to your story and thank you for your contribution to dentistry. You make us proud. Oh, ah! Thank you, Jade. That's my classmate friend. So, thank you, thank you, Dr. Carter. <laughs> yes. Another mentee said, thank you so much. Well, I just wish you continued success. Um, I hope that I can thank you in person one day, Sora. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. You do wonderful things. And um, yes, we will have this. And if any of our mentees have questions, um, they usually put them in the Facebook group. And so I might uh, reach out to you to see if they can provide any answers. But I think you share so much, a lot of insight. So thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you for having me absolutely have a great night you and too. you guys will be back next tuesday for another episode of beyond the smile take care <laughs>